so George comes to me. He's been actually talking to me for this like months by this time about what he wants to do to upgrade his car. The thing that we discussed was doing a twin turbo swap. And as soon as we started looking for it, no sooner than we started looking, we actually got a call from some guy who called me out of the blue just because he saw that I was selling used Z parts and said, this is before MWS Motorsports was even completely established yet. And it says, I've got a wrecked car, I'm right here in San Jose, do you want to buy it? So I said, okay, cool. Uh, we took a look at it. Turns out the guy had full records. It happened to be an automatic twin turbo with... Uh, oh, uh, automatic, okay. Yeah, so it had automatic uh, turbos and the automatic intake cam, so we were pretty excited about that because you can't even like run into that by accident. I mean, this just came upon us. And the engine bay was in perfect condition. There was no wreckage to that. It was all amazing, mainly on the sides of the car and in the back a little bit. And so we bought it from him and kept it in my driveway for a couple months while I got the shop together. And um, this is not the first twin turbo swap you've done. No, I've actually got a convertible that I did for myself, which has um, full on like Skyline R32 tur turbos. And I made my own down pipes and I made my own exhaust system. And I had to like mate the Skylines to the motor, which is not easy to do. And it's got an HKS boost controller and you know, coil radiator and NA rear end and you know, all that stuff. So I'm sure you recommended to George, you know, ditch the 2 plus 2, just buy a twin turbo. Why, why not? What, oh, was okay. this, what was this thing there? My big thing is that you shouldn't do a twin turbo swap unless it's for a car that natively did not come as a twin turbo in the first place. So my short list of, well, my long list is going to be convertibles, slick tops, and 2 plus 2s are good candidates for a swap. Otherwise, basically you're wasting your time because, of course, if you just have a coupe, and you just want to swap it over, then you should go and just basically sell it and buy a coupe. But there are people, I suppose, that have $5,000 worth of body kit and another $5,000 worth of paint and another $5,000 worth of stereo in their coupe, and maybe they want to do a twin turbo swap. And I guess at that point, maybe there's a justification for it. But, but particularly for George, why was it special? Oh, oh George's big thing was that he could fit three nine-foot surfboards in his two plus two. And, um, still have a sports car. And so he wanted to basically have the fastest Beach Boy car that he could possibly have. <laughs> Another reason why he didn't want to just dump it and buy a twin turbo was because he'd actually driven this car over the Swiss Alps and through most of Europe, you know, with his mom, like, you know, several years ago. So he actually went to Europe for a couple of years, took the car with him, drove it all over the place and actually worked there for a while. And then when it came time to come back, he actually brought the car back here and re-registered it in the United States. So that car has been with him for like, you know, at least 10 years. I'm doing right now is removing the drive shaft. It's actually a nice one piece and it's made out of heavy duty GM joints. They're bigger and stronger than Nissan parts.
got all the part string undone, and the AC undone. Yep. Did you vent the AC? Yep. Yeah, oh yeah. Vent into the atmosphere. It must be beauty. We should have did look at that. California would take the shit free, we'd take it in, but we'll take it. Can't you don't have a storage tank thing bubber yet to pump it back in? You gotta be certain for that. To really do it. I make it by the gear, but it could actually do the work here. When my wife was pregnant, she also had a leaky rack. Oh, <laughs> really? Excuse me, just kidding. You know, because I've never been there. It's normally when you're breastfeeding, you yeah. just get the leaky rack. Or you get the, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the breasts getting gores, oh, no. and they actually squirt milk straight up when they're lying on their back. <laughs> wow. I'm serious, I'm not kidding. It's like little fountains of milk. <laughs> I think it's in your car. Right, it's in your car. But, uh, so the 10 is actually on there or it's in my pocket. I think I got the 12 in my pocket. It's in the truck. Oh. show just like that. Except you ever seen Mythbusters? The show yeah, Mythbusters? Yeah, I don't like that, that show. They're, they're, they're bad science. Oh, oh sure, I, but I've the never, point is... I've never seen Mythbusters. I can imagine a different name. All we would do is just take tornadoes and some car plugs and all that shit. And That'd be put great. Them, and put them to the test. That'd be fun, actually. And um, call the manufacturers, keep their faces, put the fucking pair of them. The, uh, the little uh, fuel line magnets? Yeah, fuel line magnets. Oh, yeah, fuel line magnets. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you can get the rep on there like before the test and have him spray his bladder about how it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards have him like fucking like well, why didn't we achieve any power gains, you know? Like the superchargers, tornadoes, all that shit. What's a tornado? Tornado is a little intake thingy that just has enough spiral fins to spin the airstream to oh. provide a tornado effect. Help blend the fuel and air together better. Yeah. Which may work if you have a carbureted car, but fucking in a modern automobile, it's completely unnecessary. Watch your face. That's oh, something on the EFI harness. Okay. It's happening now, right? Okay, and now, can someone get up on the ladder and well, we can roll this motor up from underneath there, and then drop it down and, and close the hood. Well, or... go up, go up higher. It'll look cooler. Yeah. Right, I've only got another one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Last time. Watch out, guys. Clear. You guys want to do for lunch? Something cheap. My wife and mom something cheap. Pa? Um, George, you down with the Vietnamese noodles. Um, you can use the noodles at the time. So this is basically a stock twin turbo engine. It actually came off of an automatic. We're going to just leave the automatic cans and the automatic turbos on it because going into a five speed with a naturally aspirated rear end, it's actually going to be pretty quick. Um, see, so we got the NA power steering pump and you have to use the special brackets just for that. And um, right here is something that I'm trying. It's an experiment where basically we're using these uh, really cool GM connectors. This one just happens to be keyed properly. Uh, for this sensor. Can you hold it steady for a second? So, I can so basically, the idea behind this connector is that when you squeeze, it positively lets go of both sides. The plastic on it is a whole lot thicker, a lot stronger, and it's actually supposed to be what they call a pull-to-seat design, where once you click it in place and you yank on it, it actually helps it seat. Okay? Uh, I pulled these off of cars that have more than 100,000 miles on them and found zero, and I mean zero, corrosion on these things. Um, let's go over here. Um, on this side, we're getting into some of the special stuff that I like to do. For instance, I'm using uh, from Host Techniques a two-inch uh, pre-cut piece of uh, silicone tubing, um, as opposed to the the usual rubber tube, which always gets really hard and cracks, you know, after it bakes. These are uh, 
clamps made by a company named Breeze. They're a constant torque clamp. This spring right here is supposed to help keep the same exact tor torque measurement uh, during heat cycles. Um, if you come around here, I've got a little solution that I like to use for the uh, balance tube to keep it from leaking, which is to just basically make a rubber cellulose gasket. And one of these days I'm going to actually have these mass produced hopefully so that I don't have to keep cutting them out myself, which is a pain. Come on over here and you see Greg Dupree's new divorced wastegate downpipes with the extra length where it comes together right before the flange. Those are really nice looking pieces. We're looking forward to trying those out. Coming off the turbo here, these are my wastegate controller lines which come right up the back which is the shortest possible route meet together in a T and they're going to be going off to the boost controller which is off going to be probably next to the uh, uh, cruise control. We're going to use an HKS EBC5. Now the other thing that's important here is the throttle body water tube bypass where I actually take this tube here which normally comes off the turbo and curves this way loosen it up a bit, curve it around to the back and it's just going straight up and right into this tube right here and this one that normally connects to another tube over here is just going straight over here and down into this turbo on this side as you can see. These clamps that I'm using right here instead of using the, the regular uh, Nissan clamps I'm using Nissan's fuel injection clamps but instead of using the stainless steel screw with the Phillips head I actually put a very small little hex screw in there which just gives you more positive grip on it also makes it so that when you come back at it two or three times you know in the future like a few years from now it's not going to uh, strip on you when you try to work it. Um, coming around here is there anything else that's going on? Um, besides, so since we're not using the, the wastegate solenoids, I just sawed this bit off, which just makes it a little easier to work on the car. Uh, probably the, the other thing that's interesting is over here, the actual caps for the fuel injectors are ground back slightly on the crown because we're going to, later on at some point, we're going to use these connectors as well on this. And in order for them to mate positively, this little face right here has to be ground down just slightly. And this has to be ground down a bit. But you get the same effect where you put this guy on, it clips in place positively. All you need to do is grab the wires and get a screwdriver and press down and boom, and you can pull it straight out and it's extremely easy to use. Uh, unfortunately, before we did this uh, swap, George's uh, own harness had been gone over with a later version of the same of the 90 th 93 connectors. So we're going to leave those on there for now, but as they begin to fail, we're going to start swapping them over. And the nice thing is, that these are these crowns, these caps have already been ground down. And again, I'm using some small hex bolts in there instead of the usual Nissan Phillips head screw, which is just beyond me why they chose that design because it always strips and I always end up having to use an impact screwdriver just to be able to loosen these guys up. So here we start right here with the PRVR surge tank, which is uh, uh, just a turbo thing only. And so you basically have to set this up. And I've replaced all the lines with silicone tubing, one at a time to make sure I don't get lost and uh, everything is zip tied off and then it goes back through the standard hole on the fender well and up to the PRVR valve where it normally would be. Um, then we get over to all the turbo specific stuff. The first thing is that the uh, canister purge, uh, charcoal canister right here, is actually totally turbo specific including the clamp that holds it to the frame. Okay, um, and if you get underneath here you'll notice the trick little thing that Nissan does where they've got this air breather right here where they want to get atmosphere but they didn't want to suck water, I guess, so they basically put this thing up through the frame rail where it's just getting atmosphere. This uh, hole right here and this hole right here did not exist previously. I had to drill these two and tap this hole and then install this little, this little guy here and now and grind it out right there and now everything is exactly as it would be with stock. Now here you see the breeze clamps again, the constant torque clamps, which again we're hoping we're basically tightened once and never visit again. Um, the nice thing about uh, the setup is that these IC hangers right here, that hole is already there and it's already tapped and ready to go. These two holes right here on the other side where the IC hanger is are basically already there and ready to go. Um, you can see here all these tight little brass bends in the charcoal canister and that's one of the reasons why you have to have this because um, as I'll light it up here and illustrate, as you can see, they basically have to get out of the way of all the intercooler tubing. So you come on over here and you've got the snake pit of all the intake and outtake and everything else intercooler tubing. Um, well, the recirc goes back in there too, right? Yeah, exactly. So the recirc valve with these, the basically the nice thing is I can use a two inch breeze clamp and that they have a broader um, grip range than a T-bolt would. A T-bolt usually will only do uh, plus or minus, I mean back and forth like five millimeters so it has like a 10 millimeter total grip range and these have closer to about a 20 millimeter. So you can use a two inch to do a one and a half inch tube like this. Um, 
and use a two inch in other applications where it actually is two inch. So they're pretty economical to buy that way. Uh, this is all turbo specific, of course. The uh, air conditioning line coming in here is turbo specific. This piece right here for the air conditioning is turbo specific. Um, on this car right here, the oil cooler, if you can get up here and get a shot of this, the black bracket, these four holes existed already. Can you light it? Yeah, these four holes existed already. And basically what I did was on my convertible, those holes didn't exist at all. So it was quite easy for me to just drill four holes and tap them. But since these holes were already large, you know, what Nissan normally would have done was to put a nut behind there and then spot weld it into place. I managed to stick my finger into two of these holes and get two nuts in there and spot weld them into place, but I couldn't do all four. One of the nice gimmies that you get from Nissan is that, uh, for instance, um, this tube right here, its mounting bracket, the hole, is already drilled and tapped. The same thing goes for this little guy, but I think that that just holds true for either one of these two dryers right here. And then on this side, the uh, window washer tank actually is the same for both, so fortunately you don't have to replace that. Any one of these, the, like this, the power steering cooler line and the two AC lines, and how they intertwine, those are all twin turbo specific. Oh really? Yeah, all that stuff. Same goes for this side. There's a little bit of a dance that all these tubes do all as they come up here. I'm going to shoot that. Let me come over here. This is really crucial stuff to get right. Okay, what we've got right here is the uh, twin turbo fuel computer has been put in, but also piggybacking on top of it in this uh, frame, it's actually slightly to the right, is the twin turbo shock actuator. Later on at some point we're going to um, actually install all the four shock actuators and the heart of the system is that little computer right there. Once you run the wires, it's sort of like running a stereo throughout your entire car. You're going to have to just find some uh, 12 volts somewhere to run it. And uh, you, you get it uh, hooked up to the switch over uh, in the center console and everything works just fine. And the nice thing is on the 2 plus 2 as well as on the coupe, the uh, little piggyback bracket makes it so that it fits right on top of the fuel computer on either car. And the fuel pump we did too, but there's not much to see there. I've got a photograph of it that you can lay over if you want, but it just is a completely different beast. Do you have the, the twin turbo fuel pump layer on it? The only one you pulled out? It's over there. <coughs> it's in the box. I can. I had to take it apart because the actual pump. I had to like, if if this makes sense, I had to take the twin turbo pump, the actual mm. black motor pump, you know, yeah. and, and swap it in. Wow. So that's what I had to do. I had to like very painstakingly take both pieces apart and take the pump and put it in the other one, really? because there's absolutely no way that you can use a twin turbo. I mean, a, a coupe pump on a, twin, on a 2 plus 2. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. The sender, the, sender the, um, the strainer is in a different place. The sender is in a completely different place. Um, everything about it is totally different. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, a, it's like, you know, 30, 35 minutes worth of carefully taking things apart and trying not to rip the, cable, the, the hoses and, and trying not to bend the sender and all this other stuff just to, you know, make that happen. You hold the... Liability lever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Can you cut this side, please? Here? Yeah, on, on another driver's side, dude. Oh. On the driver's side. Yes. Clear? Clear? I'll fill this for you. Oops. <laughs> now you gotta pull it out. Okay, here it comes down. You ready? Yep. Contact. We'll all slow way, way down when we get closer to it, okay? Alright, easy does it. I think we're at the point now where we can open the hood and take a little look. Is that good? No. Now you go ahead and move the tranny some more. There you go, that's pretty good. That's actually pretty good. Okay. But I think the whole mess can still come towards you, like now perfectly straight towards you. About an inch. See the wheels aren't quite calibrated yet, so just keep keep an eye on it. Alright, stop, 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 stop. That gently does it. Keep it coming. Okay, stop a second. Okay. Uh, okay, let me see. So that little clutch guy, I want to grab that and pull it up you over know, the motor. No, 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 you do not. You want it to be like this. Oh, okay. All right. That's what you want. So just uh, continue bringing her down then. I think. Well, I if I could actually get a zip tie real quick. Come on. Are you ready? Yeah. Go. What do you think? You want to do the adjust, or are we gonna? No, everything's good. Just go for it. Just slam it home, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, move those holes. Slow down. Slow, stop, stop. Okay. Tell me what's move. Now, now, don't worry about the AC one so much. But this just, right here is going to interfere. Nervous cow. <laughs> what do you get from a nervous cow? I don't know. What do you get? It's got milkshake. That's excellent. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Did you get that on, on film? Oh, of course I did. Yeah, are you ready? Here we go. Here it comes. Comedy and engine swapping always mixes. Oh. What do windows bring when they go out in the sun? I don't know. Shades. Shades, oh. <laughs> That's good, I like that one. The first bed crunching noise. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not the last. It's been a pretty fragile. So whatever it was, it's broken now. So right. it doesn't matter. Oh, I see. I see what it was. Well, was it something broken? It was. Uh, let me think. What was that? That was. Uh, well, hold on. This is actually something I need to pay attention to. I think. <laughs> yes. What are you getting to back there? Oh, it's an AIV tube getting Mangled. pummeled <laughs> quite badly. Um, Shall we rev the car? No, if I go down, it's actually probably a good thing for it. I swear, disabled yeah, he is. We're going to get him through his, his first smog. Okay, slow down here. And then we'll talk about the AAV disablement at the end. There we go, it'll do. <laughs> Alright, do I come a little more? Me and Rosie O'Donnell. How's the tranny look? Can you look at the. Why do birds fly south? Um, because. Uh, <laughs> what? It's too far to walk. It's a big fly stop. Here we go. Ready? Okay. I have not attached the steering thing. Okay, now don't worry about the steering so much. Do you have about an inch between the front bolt and the hole that it's going to go into? I... Oh my goodness, it's actually very close. The motor would need to be pushed back towards the rear of the car really? by about like an eighth of an inch, like nothing hardly at all. Really? So if, if someone just gets over here and gives it a kick, which I can do if you want. What's the okay, best way to make a fire out of sticks? Uh, couldn't, get, couldn't even gander to guess there. Well, Probably good. Make sure one of the that was actually a little too much. That's good. Like that was a little too much. Okay? It was a little too much. I pushed it a little too far. Okay, grab the control arm and move it. I think it's going to work better for you, dude. Did you be able to see what you're doing? No, dude, I got it. Okay? Hang on. Here, you grab the control arm. I'm going to grab the control arm and we're going to twist, okay? Because mine's a little off now, okay? Okay. Put yours where you want it. No, you don't want to pull it over that far. Dude, it's not. Push push the motor towards your side or pull it. <laughs> I, I agree. Here goes. That's good. Stop, 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 stop. And now I need to twist it slightly in order to line up for me, okay? Okay, you go for it. I'm perfect actually right now. Here we go. Yeah, perfectly good. Check. Is there a rear bolt? Yeah, there is, and it's good. Yeah, good. yeah, hold on. Rear's good for me. I'm looking pretty good. What makes more noise than a cat stuck in a tree? Um, I don't know. I mean, two cats stuck in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> She's got a lot of these. She is on roll, I tell you. <laughs> Yeah. I just modified it slightly. With a dice. James? It's a, a twin, twin turbo! turbo. <laughs> okay. Can I get any more corny? <laughs> Here, start this thing like yeah. now? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the beast. <laughs> yes. Hopefully it will work. Hopefully that footage will embarrass me and finally get that door fixed. <laughs> <laughs> the critical time is here. Ugh, okay. It's been about, I don't know, maybe almost seven or eight days, including degreasing every single part of it in the sun. Notice this expression. If it's going to start, I have the clutch anticipation. I mean, the clutch um, start switch down here. Um, yes, to remember that to hit that in order to start the car. Started the first time, that's pretty good. 
<laughs> this guy's got a dime. The guy who owns this car is calling him right now. Yeah, that's just the lifter, right? That's the lifter. It's going to be alright. It's not the Anyway, it runs, dude. <laughs> he, he's, he's happy. He's a happy yeah. guy. <laughs> As you can imagine. Oh, that's a fine day. I'm about to see how good a job was done with this twin turbo conversion. You're going to drive it. I'm going to drive it. All right, we are recording once again. Okay. Just adjusting my mirrors. Well, I totally changed the configuration of your car. Seat belt on. <laughs> <laughs> you eating? Are you comfortable? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Our first challenge. Yes. Can I make a right hand turn without killing us? What clutch have you got in this car? It's a uh, Jim Wolf. Okay. Oh yeah. It's very responsive, isn't it? I find it to be very responsive indeed. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, let's try it out here. viewing audience will be able to tell by the amount of camera shake going on that <laughs> things were moving. That, yeah, we were definitely accelerating. Yeah, Michael really does blast down this road with little regard for the law. <laughs> uh, I'm not as bold. <laughs> we pulled over too many times. <laughs> yeah, it really comes on good like the... I'm gonna do an experiment in a moment here. Let's pull you in. Florida, out of the I'm kind of like inclined to get on the freeway. Is that cool? Sure. You want to take him out? Uh, I would if I could, but it's uh, traffic's pretty dense right now. Let's uh, just see how this goes here. So, fifth gear, 2500 RPM. Florida. Oh yeah, that comes on very quick. Do I need fatter tires on the rear? Yes. <laughs> this is a certainty. Like I, I've noticed that I cannot keep traction in first or second, but even because it's wet right now, even third gear is kind of difficult to get it to stick. <laughs> if you can actually make it hook up, I think that would be pretty awesome. Oh, that's pretty cool. It doesn't take long to get to 40 miles an hour, does it? <laughs> <laughs> this is why your fuel economy, by the way, is probably <laughs> sitting around the 12 mark, I would say. <laughs> do, you, are you, uh, do you think it was the right choice to do this? You know, it, it's unjustifiable, really. <laughs> 
right. but it's so much fun. It's indefensible. It's indefensible, <laughs> really, to have done it. But it's so much fun. Uh, I, I have not yet regretted it, let's right. put it that way. All right, George. <laughs> Final summation, James? <laughs> I need to use the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> I think that says it all. Yeah. <laughs> Did you end up using the... Can you use the NA ECU or is it the Twin Turbo ECU? No, it's definitely work? a Twin Turbo ECU. It's just using a regular um, automatic transmission Twin Turbo ECU with the uh, Twin Turbo programming in. Right. So, um, tell me the story of the theft. What happened? Well, so this is kind of sad actually. Like only maybe two weeks after we're done with the swap and you know this, the car is here in the shop while I'm putting MWS Motorsports together and sort of working on it, working on the shop, working on it for like probably at least two months through like November, December, he finally takes delivery of the car in December and he lives in a nice neighborhood in San Francisco but he has to park the car on the street and um, not two weeks after he bought it, um, after parking it on that same street for like the last four or five years, suddenly someone decides they've got to have his car and they stole it and um, it's just utterly missing, you know, and, and so finally he puts them the police report and everything else and Four weeks go by and he gets a call from the CHP that they chased someone down and um, that uh, they'd arrested the guy at least, but that he'd smashed the car into a wall. And so oh, we weren't sure just how bad off the car was, but um, once we got a look at it, it was an absolute total wreck. And we asked, well, how the heck did this guy gain entry to the car if it had a stock alarm system on it? And apparently he was using something that they call a shaved key which I had mm -hmm. never heard of before, but I guess you could actually just, if you have like some sort of master key for like a particular type of car, you can just get in. And so, wow. you know, my uh, basically warning to everybody is that there's just been a rash of people stealing Z's and just like within the last year, or like the last six months, and you have to go and get some sort of a ignition kill switch or fuel kill switch or something installed in your car and at least buy a club. A club is like less than 50 bucks. We spent all that time, all that energy, all that work, and the kid stole it, and he put like a big giant subwoofer box about yay big in it, <laughs> and that was his big mod, and was driving that car around with with the plates that it had in the first place, and you know attracting attention from the police for like three or four weeks before he finally got chased down by the CHP, and got out of control because he was driving too much car for him, and slammed it into a wall, and the car is an absolute total wreck. Engine is toast, everything? or Engine is toast because I've already uh, basically been able to see inside the timing cover and see that the belt has actually slipped off the cogs. There's no belt in there that I can see. So obviously we have pistons crashing into valves. Oh, shit. And so, um, you know, as a matter of fact, I've, I've got it outside and it's like oh, really? waiting to, to disassemble it. Show me. So, sadly, here's what's left of two, wor two months worth of hard work while I was putting the shop together. Oh man. Here it is. Dude. And uh, here's the engine bay. And you can see the engine's been crunched up against the uh, firewall real hard. Right there, the uh, timing cover's broken. And if you were to take a look inside, you'd be able to see that the belt isn't on the cogs anymore, on the sprockets anymore. So, uh, I mean, it's just, there may be an engine block in here and a crank, and that's about it. And maybe, you know, some turbos. So, folks, protect your Z's or this could happen to you, unfortunately.